Hi everyone and welcome back to another model railway review from class 47 Peter and in today's review we're going to be having a look at the Batman class A2 60532 Blue Peter which this model is a Batman Collectors Club edition model now I saw this model on eBay for £170 which I thought was a bit of a bargain because I have seen these go for 200 quid, and so as soon as I saw it I just had to grab it and buy it and so I did however when I first got the model all wasn't as as it seemed which I will talk to you about in just a second so this is the plastic ice cube packaging that we're all familiar and used to seeing now from the manufacturers now upon removing the plastic packaging from the sleeve we get all the paperwork. We have the collector club leaflet there. We also have the guarantee as well as the exploded diagram which on the back also gives you some instructions for this model. And you also get the limited edition certificates. This one is number 255 as you can see there so I shall be putting that in my folder where I keep all my certificates. I have one for keeping my certificates in and two for putting my instruction manuals in and also on the back you get some brief history of Blue Peter Upon removal of the plastic outer sleeve, we have the detail packs. So we have etched name plates for the loco. One of them is one of them has a black background and the other is a blue background, just like the real loco. I'm not too sure why this loco has two different colour backgrounds on its name plates. But I shall be adding these later. And we also have the accessory bag with the drain cocks, vacuum pipes, the footsteps and the cab doors which I'll fit those on later okay so the model's been removed from the box now normally at this point I'd go straight on to talk about the detail but before I do I want to talk about my experience I had with this model when I first got it because not all was as it seemed I'll start with the tender now on the tender just underneath here there's a plastic lug and the idea of that is that it's the drawbar there on the back of the loco there that basically slots onto the plastic lug which is slotting through that gap there in the face plate of the tender now that lug had broke off so what I had to do was I had to get a small little screw as you can see there and glue it on in place with aldides and it still works just as well as the plastic lug does because I have tested it and it does work but you know, if I'm honest, this way of connecting the low coast to the tenders, it's not flawless. You know, it, it can be flawed, especially if that little plastic lug that relies on clipping the, on connecting the lug and the tender together, if that snaps off, then you know that can be a problem. But thankfully, I managed to solve that by using a small screw. 
Now as for the loco, when I first opened her up from the box, I noticed there was a big gap under the cab. And so to fix that, I had to take the body off. And that was a little bit of a nightmare. Well, not taking it off, but to put it back on again was, you know, this foot plate here, I had to make sure that was in properly when fixing the cab back onto the frames. Also, these parts here, which are the outer steam pipes, nice bit of detail to have, but they also unclipped off. And to put them back into place, that took an age. The one it was okay with, I on the third try of putting it in, it went in. But it wasn't so much the case with the other one, it took what seemed like hours to put it back in again. Also, to fit the cab on, I had to make sure, well, there was the weight in the model as well. I had to fix that in place, back in as well, that wasn't so hard to do. Though I had to hold it in place using a bit of blue tack temporarily while I fitted the screws back in for it to hold it in place. And then for this pipe work here, I had to make sure it was slotted into the hole in the cab whilst fixing that back on in place. But it's all sorted now, it's all fine, it's been sorted and, you know, it is a great model but those problems, you know, they can happen, it's just a one-off and hopefully this is the sort of thing I should never have to experience again. But it's just one of those things, but all those things are sorted now, so she's fine. And the main thing is that she works as well, she does run, which you'll see later. But now we can move on to the detail, so first of all, we have the as standard now on most, if not all models now, sprung metal buffers. We've also got the slim M tension knot coupling there. I also do love the electric headlamps then, that they've been painted. Now that really is a great bit of detail that is. We've also got the lamp points as well, on top of those. On the smoke box door we have the chrome painted smoke box door darts and the hinges there. And the smoke and the smoke box door darts are separately fitted as well. You've got the separately fitted handrails there on top and the lamp iron. There's some very nice fine white lining on the wheels. Which you know it really does actually it makes the wheels stand out. And they're painted a lovely green as well, just like on the loco. And just look at all the link motion there as well. You know, that looks superb. And we've also got the red lining, picked out in various places, such as on the running plate and on the cylinders. And on that, that link motion part there. And even on the pony truck. You know, it really is a gorgeous livery. We have the separately fitted metal handrails on the smoke deflectors and some nice rivet detail on those too and the printed name plates so the extra ones are optional you don't have to fit them on but I shall put them on because I like the extra name plates you've got the outer steam pipes there and you've got the steam piping under that separately fitted handrail that runs down alongside the boiler this looks very nice indeed we've got glazing in the cab windows too which is also nice to see We've also got the separately fitted handrails on the sides of the cab, on the cab size there, and the Loco's room number 60532 crisply printed on. On the cab roof we have a wealth of rivet detail, as you can see, and cab roof fence which they don't open, but that's not really that much of a big issue, to be honest, but they're still there anyway, so they still look nice. Now I can't leave out the painted cab interior detail. Just look at it. The pipe work, the gauges, the dials, the regulator, it's all painted and it it adds to the detail of these models and it brings them to life, I think. You've also got the seats there as well for the crew to sit on. On the other side of the model you have this steam heated piping as well that runs on top of the handrail and runs just to the front of the smoke box there as you can see. And that's separately fitted. It's a nice bit of detail to see. It's a nice bit of detail to have, and again, it makes them all look more detailed. And we also have the whistles and the safety valves. The safety valves are made out of turn brass. The whistle on top is not made out of brass, but it looks to be painted, and it still looks nice. 
Now the livery on this model is absolutely gorgeous. I do love the BR apple green line livery. You know the green it's the correct shade. Nice even coat of paint, no errors in it. And I do love the white lining on this model. You know that really does lift the livery and brings it out more I think. And it, it really is a gorgeous livery. So now we move on to the tender again. Even coat of paint and the correct shade as well. And there's a wealth of rivet detail on the tender sides. We've got British Railways crispy printed on the tender sides as well. The correct style of font as well. There is some nice detail on the tender frames. The axle boxes and the springs there. And again you've got that red lining as well. As you can see on the face plate of the tender, we have the handbrake there, the storage cabinets and that coal in the chute there at the front. And I like that the front of the tender here on the face plate, it's painted in the same shade of green that's on the loco and on the tender. The coal load is also removable in this model, as I shall now demonstrate. As you can see. So I shall be getting some real coal, or in my case I'm going to be using calcium sand, the black calcium sand, to use as a coal load, and I'm going to put that inside the tender. You don't have to of course, it's up to you, but you can do it, and that's what I shall be doing. And then on the back of the tender we have, again, lots of rivet detail as you can see, the electric headlamps, separately fitted metal handrails, and these steps for the crew to climb up to the water filler cap on top of the tender. You have a slim tension lock coupling there on the tender and just like on the loco sprung metal buffers. Okay so I've added all the detail parts on this model that came with the model the drain cocks, the etched name plates have gone on as well as of course the vacuum pipes and the cab doors and I've also added a coal load so now we come to the running performance for Blue Peter and she does run smooth, look at that I'm not going to go around very fast because I just want to show you how smooth she runs and she's undergoing running as well at this point just because all the link motion there moving and more importantly this is how she should run straight from the box no motors burning out, no horrible grinding noises or anything of that nature. She runs as smooth as pudding. And doesn't she look magnificent? So now we come to the loaded test run for Blue Peter and I've got to pull in the teak coaches around the layout and these coaches they do go well with this locomotive and they really do fit suit a locomotive in apple green whether it's the BR livery or the LNER version of the livery and this just looks spectacular seeing her pulling these coaches Okay, so that pretty much now brings me on to my overall conclusion for this model. So what do I think of it? Well, I will overgloss what happened when I first got this model because that could have happened to anyone really. It's just a bit of unluckiness to be honest. If I had to be critical though, I'd say that the little lug or peg, whatever you choose to call it, that connects the tent to the loco. It's not a brilliant design, if I'm honest. I think they would have been better off using that plug 
socket thing. You know that Batman have done on other models and Hornby have done as well. That plug with the wires attached to it that fixed into that socket. I think that might have been a better idea to have had it on a model like this, if I'm being honest. But apart from that though, it is still a stunning model. And as you can see, I've got a parked up right next to Tornado and I will be doing a double header with these two. Something I've longed to see is a double header with Blue Peter and Tornado both wearing the BR lined apple green livery hauling a rake of Mark 1's either maroon or chocolate and cream and you know these two double heading that would be a spectacular sight it's something I'd love to see happen in real life as well it, if such an idea if such a double header can happen it can't happen at this point because Blue Peter is currently undergoing an overhaul but when Blue Peter does come out of overhaul maybe this double header could happen but it definitely can happen in model form I can make it happen because I've got both Tornado and Blue Peter now in my fleet and that is what I'm going to be doing so do keep an eye out on the channel for that for that video because that is something that I will most definitely be looking forward to so all that's left for me to say now is thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed this video check out my other videos subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time take care